Within these three days, we're going to bring to you God's word. I am here because you are very important before God. We've, we've done a 21 days fast the day of our church for the nation. And to deal with that which man and the enemy has spoken over this nation. The things that has been programmed in the heavens and has been predicted and projected over the destiny of the people of this land. And over the destiny of God's heritage to deprogram those, those things and to speak into those things that only the wisdom and the counsel of God will stand. For you shall be scattered and to say to the speakings of the enemy, speak, O evil one, but your counsel shall not stand. For God is with us. Shout yes. yes. And today being the first day, I have to be with the flock of God. But I knew also that God wanted me to be here because you are special people. If we can get the women to accept what they are and what God has made them, the devil will leave this city and he will leave this nation. And within these three days, we are going to be talking about the purpose of the woman, the wife, and the mother. And I believe that as we have an opportunity some other time, we will address the men in the full gospel chapters to help them to know the purpose of the man the husband and the father. We need to have an understanding of God's purpose. Thank you, sir. Hallelujah. Glory to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. And I believe that ignorance of purpose results into abuse. When you don't understand the use of something, you abuse it. You mishandle it. When you don't understand the use of money, and you don't know the purpose and the reason for money, you mishandle it. But when you know the purpose of money, you don't mishandle it because you know the purpose. And ignorance of a purpose of anything results into abuse. And I believe that as women, God is saying that you need to have an in-depth understanding of the purpose for which you were made. Hallelujah. The man was formed, but the woman was made. The word form means to squeeze. The man was squeezed by God. And that's why men have muscles and tight things. Hallelujah. But the woman was made. And the word made here means she was skillfully and carefully handcrafted by God. So that she can be desired of the man. So that she can be admired by the man. And no wonder when Adam saw her, he said, This is now bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called the womb man. The man with a womb. Hallelujah. And so we want to look into scripture today. If you please stand with me, say I please. If you come with me to Genesis chapter 2 verse 18, verse 7 talked about God from the man, from the dust of the earth, and breathing to his nostrils the breath of life, and he became a living soul. And God set him in the east of Eden, and put the man that he has formed there. Verse 9, the Bible says, let's look at verse 9, I think I may connect it to certain things. Out of the earth, God made, the Lord God made. To grow every tree that is pleasant to sight and good for food. And the tree of life also in the midst of the garden. The tree of knowledge and of good and evil was in the garden. I want you to look at me for a minute before I break this thing down. You got to understand that when it came to the trees, the plants of the earth, and the cattle of the field, and the beasts, and the fowls of the air. According to scripture in Genesis, the Bible, the Bible says the Lord God called them from the dust of the earth. They came from the earth. And anything that came from something needs that something to exist. Is that correct? Whatever you came out from, automatically you need it to exist. When it comes to the fish of the sea, the Bible says the Lord God called it forth from the sea, from the waters. And they brought forth the fishes thereof. So you got to understand that when you take fish out of the sea, it cannot survive. It dies. So the fish needs the sea to survive. Is that correct? Now, you got to understand, in order to connect this carefully, you got to understand that the mother of the man 
the mother of the man is the man. Come with me. Look at Genesis 2.18. And the Lord God said, it is not good for the man that he should be alone. Not that he should be lonely or that he was lonely. The Bible said alone. 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 There's a difference between being alone and being lonely. Amen. The Lord God said it is not good for the man that he should be alone, not lonely. And he said, I will make him a helper meet, fit for him. I want you to understand here, ladies and gentlemen, that it was God that instituted or invented the idea of marriage. And God meant it for good and not for evil. And God's original plan about marriage has not changed. And whatever God did, the Bible said was good. Is that correct? So marriage is good. Amen. The Bible said that marriage is honorable and the bed is undefined. Amen. So marriage is good. And you've got to program your mind and accept that marriage is good. Now it doesn't matter what you've been through and how many marriages you have experienced. And whether you are married to Jesus or to a beast or to Satan, marriage is good. That is God's plan. Marriage is good. God invented it. It was God's idea. It was in the man's idea. It was in the woman's idea. You got to understand that the woman had nothing to do with this. It was God himself that made the decision and brought the woman on the scene. Now, if the Bible said, and the Lord God said it was not good for the man that he should be alone, then you got to understand that then men having wives or women is good. You understand what I mean? If the Lord God said, it was not good for the man to be alone. That means it's good for the man to have a wife. It's good for the man to be married. It's good for the man to have a woman in his life. And it is not good for a man to be without a wife. Amen. You got to understand that carefully. Come to verse 21. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall unto Adam, and he slept. And the Lord took out of his rib and closed up the flesh thereof. And verse 22. And the rib which the Lord God took, from him, the Bible says, from the man, he made, he made, he made, he made. There's a difference between made and form. He skillfully, carefully handcrafted the woman. Hallelujah. Now, when I said that, the man is the mother of the woman. Here you got to understand that if the, if the fish of the sea came out of the sea or the waters, it was given back by the waters and the trees and the, uh, and the cattle of the field, the fowls of the air, according to scripture, and the beasts of the field came out of the dust of the earth and they need dust in order for them to survive. And they cannot live without, they can't survive without dust. If you watch the trees, they need the soil. To survive because they came out of it. Are you hearing me? And the human body itself came out of dust and it needs dust to survive. Now, if you eat meat today, you eat dust. If you eat chicken, you eat dust. Whatever food you eat today is dust. Whether it is salad or cabbage or tomatoes or pepper or onions, they are all dust. So your body feeds on dust to survive. And without dust, your body don't make it. Because out of dust came this body, and unto dust shall this body what? Return. So the body needs dust in order for the body to what? Survive. And you got to understand that the beasts of the field, they all eat dust to survive. The trees, the plants, the birds of the air, they all eat dust because they need dust in order for them to survive because they came out of what? Dust. And if it is true and it is so, then you got to understand, ladies and gentlemen, that if the woman came out of him, then it means that she was birthed out of him. And she, if she was birthed out of him, then the man is the mother of the woman. And you see, if he is the mother of the woman, then she needs him in order for her to function properly. Amen? So this idea of women fighting and refusing to accept themselves for what they are, and trying to be what they are not is wrong. Now it doesn't matter what philosophy or logic or education or civilization says. Before logic, philosophy and civilization, God was. 
And God's plan was there before logic, philosophy, and civilization and education. And God's plan has not changed. The purpose of, of, the, of the woman is not for her to be educated, even though education is good. And it's not for her to become a graduate, a lawyer, a doctor, and all that women are today to challenge the man and to claim equality. Men and women are not equal. We are not equal. We are not equal in functions and in ranks. In Christ, there is neither male or female. Before God, we are equal as spirit beings. We don't have a spirit of a female and a spirit of a male. No. The spirit of a man is, is, is a spirit of a female. It's a spirit of a male. And the spirit of a man is a spirit of a male. The spirit you have is a spirit of a man before God. And the spirit I have is a spirit of a man before God. But physically... Because of ranks and functions and God purposes for each one of us physically and spiritually in order for us to function properly, I am a male and you are a female. But then spiritually there is no difference between my spirit and your spirit. That's what the Bible says in Christ, there is neither male or female. Amen. So here we got to understand that the purpose of, of the female, it was God who came on the scene. And, and you got to understand the problem God had here, ladies and gentlemen. You got to understand that God is almighty and he's powerful, full of love, grace, power, mercy, name it, everything. And, and, and God was alone with himself, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. They are together. Yeah, and nobody admired and appreciated what he was and what he had. Because if God did not bring man to planet Earth and form man and made the woman for, for Adam and Eve to begin to multiply, replenish the earth, subdue, take dominion, and have dominion over everything that God had created, man wouldn't have come on this scene, and no man would have known God, and no man would have become a man anywhere, and even known that he's a man or a female or whatever you call it. So God sat up there, and in order for him to be appreciated for what he is, and to share with somebody what he has, because he had all the power to himself. He had all the love to himself. And, and you see, the thing also here is that God could not fellowship with the angels. You got to understand, because angels were not made in his image. They are ministering beings. They are servants. You got to understand that they are servants, ministering beings. And so God could not fellowship with the angels and share his love with the angels. Angels just go and take command. You, you, when God tells an angel, go and kill, the angel goes and kills. That, that is it. They, they, they take orders and they are not allowed to use their senses like we do, exercise their will, etc. No, they are made as, as, as beings by God to serve the purposes of God. And, and so here God could not share his love and power and everything with the angels. So God said, I will have to bring out of myself that which came out of me that looks like me that can relate to me. You, you see, it doesn't matter how nice you, you, you are to your dog or how much you relate to your dog. You've got to understand that you and that dog are different beings. And I have a problem with people who kiss their dogs and sleep with their dogs in their bedrooms and on their bed and wheels their property to their dogs and love dogs than human beings because the dog came out. The dog is a different thing altogether from you. Hallelujah. And you also got to understand here, when you give something, to, to, to some, something or somebody who is not of, of your understanding and of your background and of your making, that person can value and appreciate it. And it doesn't matter how much you love a dog, a dog can appreciate your love. Now, when you give, when you give a cow meat and, and you give, um, honey, what do you call this thing? Miss meat. Now, you see, the price of a cow meat and minced meat is different. Is that correct? You see, because I believe that with the minced meat, you, you use all kinds of things. You add certain things to it. So it makes it more expensive than the cow meat, even though it came out of the cow meat. Is that correct? Now, when you give a dog a cow meat and minced meat, when he finishes eating the cow meat and the minced meat, he will not come to you and say, thank you, master, because the dog does not know the difference between minced meat and cow meat. Are you hearing me? And that's why when the woman of Canaan came to Jesus and said, My daughter is sick and vexed with the, uh, vexed with the spirit, Jesus said that you are a dog. I can't give the children breast to dog. And the woman said, Yes, I accept that I'm a dog. And Jesus, what Jesus meant was that you can't appreciate and value what you're asking me for. I can't give it to you because you won't value, you won't appreciate. You don't know what I have to go through to give it to you. 
Because I'm called to the Jews now. Before the cross, Jesus was called to the lost sheep of the household of Israel. And therefore, outside the household of Israel, nobody was supposed to be healed or to receive a miracle. Only the household of Israel. And it was after the cross that we Gentiles came in. And what Jesus meant was that, woman, you are asking me for something that you can only receive after the cross. You cannot receive it now. So when I give it to you, you don't know what I have to go through to give it to you. So you can't value it. And the woman said, I understand all that. But the dogs eat of the crumbs that fall from their master's table. And Jesus looked at her and said, I called you a dog and you were not mad and angry. Are you getting me? He said, great is thy faith, O woman. You have what you want. Are you hearing me? Now you can't call human beings dog today. The latest newspaper in town will hit you front page tomorrow morning. Are you hearing me? But Jesus in his day, Jesus had to say it as it was. And this is a generation that you don't have to say it as it is anymore. You have to find a way to present it. Hallelujah. They call it wisdom, diplomacy. So here you get to understand that God was not lonely, but God was alone. Now, the reason why he was alone was because he had all the power to himself. But he had nobody to share the power and the love he had with. So, he said, after everything was created, God went into himself and said, let us make a man in our own image, after our own likeness. Are you getting the revelation here? One that will see like we feel, will see like we see, will touch like we touch, will breathe like we breathe, will act like we act. One that will just represent an, an express image of all that we are, the embodiment of God on planet Earth. So God went into himself, and out of himself he brought forth man. Are you getting me, somebody? And God now could relate to man because he came out of him. Just as the animals to relate to one another. And the reason why God said it was not good for the man to be alone, God had given Adam power and dominion over everything and named all the beasts of the field, the fowls of the earth, the cattle and everything. But then Adam had one problem. He could not relate to the beasts of the field, the fowls of the earth, the cattle. Why? Because they were not made after his likeness and they are not of his word image. So he could not relate to them. And so God realized that the man had no one to fellowship with and no one to relate to him. And not that only, but the man had power and the man was full of love. Because God had love. He had power. And God infested some of his love and power to man. I need to bring somebody to come and partake of his love and to come and enjoy and to come to relate and to fellowship with. So God said the only way he can relate to her properly and, and, and the only way she can partake of his love, and, and they can fellowship, and they can reason one with another, I need to go into him and bring her out of him. Are you getting the revelation here? And that's why Adam says she's born of my bone and what? Flesh. Of my flesh, because she came out of him. Amen. Now, when... If you look at scripture very carefully, it's only one that the Bible says in Titus by Paul that let the elderly women teach the younger women how to love their men or how to show affection towards their men. Hallelujah. That's what really it means. But if you look at scripture carefully, all the time the Bible talks about the man loving, the man loving, the man loving. Why? Because the man made by God, formed by God in the beginning, was given love and power and ability. And the woman is a receiver and the man is a giver. Because if you look at everything that women are made out of, they are made to receive, and the man is made to give. That's why men are always going around chasing men. He's a giver. He has energy. He has power. He has love. And he's going, he's going around trying to give and say, woman, I'm a giver. I want to give to you. But then the man forgets the purpose of which he's made. So he's abusing that thing which God has given him by running all over the place trying to give to every woman what he has. Amen. So I believe I've laid some few foundations here which will help you to understand where I'm coming from. So it is good for a man to be married. Amen. Now the main purpose for which a woman was made is in Genesis 2.18 where the Bible said the latter part of it where the Bible said I will make him a help meet. Which literally means to surround the man with aid and assistance and to complete him. To surround him with aid and assistance and complete him. Now, you have to understand that a man without a woman in his life cannot be complete. If there is no way 
You can tell me whatever you want to tell me. Forget it. I believe God than you. Because God is smarter, wiser, and intelligent than you. And God is many thousand years and months and generations and eternity ahead of you. And God said, it is not good for the man to be alone. I will make him a help meet. Amen. So the woman is what? A help meet. You are to surround your husband with what? Aid and what? Assistance. And to do what? Complete the man. So when men marry, when the Bible says one shall put a thousand to flight, and two shall put ten thousand to flight, when you, when you marry a man, if he was a laborer receiving a salary of ten thousand, when you marry him because you have come into his life, that man automatically must be, he must, he must excel, number one, and then two, his creativity must advance. And that man must experience some kind of a promotion, some kind of progress and lift and raise and development because now he has someone who has joined with him forces. You have joined your forces with his forces together, fighting the challenges of life. Are you getting the revelation here? And he is no more alone because now he has somebody to think with, to reason with, to relate with. And not that only, but he has someone surrounding him like a crown, a shield, a defense, a protection. With aid and assistance, assistance, mental assistance, emotional assistance, spiritual assistance, financial assistance, environmental assistance, assistance in every area of life. And also to complete the man. That means there are certain things that is missing in the man because you were taken out of him. You see the man, you see, you got to understand that you were in the man. And that made him good and complete. But when God took him out of you, God did it that way. God formed. God made sure you were in there. When he, was, when he formed the man, he made sure you were in there. You see, God foreknew what he wanted to do. He planned it all out. And in order for him to do this, he put you in there. So when God took you out of, when God took you out of him, that rip that was taken out of the mouth. Now you get to understand medical science. I was checking it recently. One rip of men it's missing. I don't know if there's a doctor here. Some doctor friend of mine was trying to give me the whole thing. You know, I think I need to research it again. You know, the doctors here will tell you. Now, I'm without a rib. And, and whatever that rib means and is, is to make me complete. And without it, I can't be complete. And that is that, is that rib there. Are you getting it? She is that rib. And without this one, I can't function properly. Now, it doesn't matter how strong a man is, emotionally and mentally and physically, you cannot function as you ought to function without that missing rib. And that missing rib is that woman. Now, I'm not going to, some people believe that um, God has a special rib for you and, and all those things and all that. So, they are waiting on God and they want to hear a prophetic word and all that. Well, if that is what you believe, I don't have a problem with that. But if you want to get married and you are a man, there are certain qualities to seek out for. Simple, is in the Bible. There are certain qualities right in the Bible here. The Bible says he that finds a wife, not a woman. There's a difference between a woman, a wife, and a mother. You, you hear that tomorrow and Saturday. Amen. So, all these things that people do, go to a mountain, want to go to the prophet and hear from God. I've seen people who receive prophecy and the word of the Lord came and said, That says yes, the Lord, this is your wife, marry her. I have problems with that. Because God is not going to live with that woman for you. You are going to live with her. And so you got to know her. Amen. Hallelujah. So, so, so here you realize that the woman, the purpose of the female, say the purpose of the female, is to help the man and to assist the man to fulfill his God-given dreams or God's agenda for him. Now, without the woman, it doesn't matter how hard a man works, you are lacking aid and assistance and help. There is a help you are being deprived and denied of. Now, it doesn't matter how much smart a man is, there are certain desires and longings that you can't fulfill yourself. It takes the touch of a woman. Are you hearing me, somebody? Now, you get to understand that God skillfully, are you getting me, and carefully, handcrafted the woman. And that's why she's attractive. 
And that's why the man sees a woman and desires her because of her shape and the way she was made by God. Are you getting me? Carefully handcrafted. And so when you see a woman and you see men looking at a woman, there is nothing wrong to admire a woman. Are you getting me? I look at my wife sometimes. And I, amen. And I see other women. Hallelujah. But, but then it is what you do with what you see. Are you hearing me? But if you are just seeing and admiring and admiring here, you got to understand that carefully. You don't go around and tell your, your wife that my, that baby is heavy. You got to be careful. That's not what I'm saying. Hallelujah. But I'm saying that the woman is made by God in a way to be what? Admired. Uh, and so there's nothing wrong to be admired, women. That is the way you are made by God. Uh, and and if, you, if, if you touch the bodies of women, it, it, their skins, like, like that of my wife. Are, are you hearing me? Hallelujah. It, it, it's all soft and gentle, like the skin of a baby. Are you hearing me? And the touch of their hand, when you hold the hand of a man, is hard. But the hand of a woman is so soft and tender. And every man needs the hand of a woman to touch you. Because when those hands come around you, there is some anointing that flows from those hands. I'm telling you. Are you hearing me? Now, if you're a man and you are here, you are not married, you don't know what you're missing. I'm telling you. Because those women are fantastic. You see, and God made them that way to be fantastic. And, and when you come, when, when the whole world is against you and ten against you, and you come home, and your woman looks at you in the eye and said, Honey, I believe in you. Are you hearing me? And says, Sit down, honey, let me minister to you. And he sits down, and the woman removes his shoes and his socks, and puts his leg in the warm water, and sits down there, and begins to minister and to worship that man by telling him how good he is, and how he can do it. And don't worry about what the world is saying. Honey, you have me. I'm on your side. Come on, lift up your hands and shout. You don't know what does. You don't know what that does to the man. Suddenly he feels a new strength. And it's like, it's, it's like, it's like he's endowed with a new ability. And he sees a new horizon. And something rises up in him and tells him, don't look that way. And don't let your woman be, be don't let, don't let that woman lose confidence in you. Stand up man, go out there and do it. And that man is fooled with the ability and the confidence to go out there. And he tells himself, it doesn't matter who is against me. As long as she is for me, I am all right. Are you hearing me? And women, you got to understand that when the woman came on the scene, there was no other person but the man. And, and you got to understand that all the man had was the woman. And that was all she need, he needed. And so all the man needs, as a matter of fact, is the woman. If two shall agree. If two shall agree. The Bible said two is better than one. If two shall agree. One shall put a thousand to fly. Two shall put ten thousand to fly. If two shall agree. There is power. The power of agreement, dunamos, in agreement between husband and wife. And that's why the enemy will do everything to undermine a relationship between a husband and a wife. Because he knows the secret of power that can be released. And all I need is my woman. As long as we are together in agreement, it doesn't matter what the enemy throws at us. It doesn't matter the conspiracy and who, who sits down to plan it. It doesn't matter the mastermind behind the orchestrated conspiracies. It doesn't matter how it is predicted and how it is projected and who and, and how it, 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 it is set up or set in motion. It shall not stand. Neither shall it come to pass. And them that give themselves up to the enemy to become vessels and instruments, physical vessels and instruments to execute and to administer the enemy's agenda and the enemy's plans and desire, they shall be as the grass that withers and as the flower that feathered, yea, like the chaff before the wind. The woman. Whatever the woman, you see, society and our culture and tradition has undermined 
the purpose of the woman. Many a times when women are going to get married, their marriage says, tells them that you got to be wise. You know what your father did to me. You got to be wise. You got to be smart. You got to think about yourself. You got to think about the kids. And, 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 and you got to remember home and whatever you get, bring it home. That undermines the purpose for the female. The purpose of the woman is undermined by that counsel. There are a lot of beliefs and counsel. Women and men need to be deprogrammed and to be reprogrammed. And I'm saying certain things. I know that some of you, you are not accepting it. Because it's, today is the first day you are hearing some of the things I'm saying. And so you can't accept it. And some of us, we, are, we have been negatively programmed. And, and the human being is not used to change. And so we always cite something we haven't heard before or we don't understand. And everybody, I am like that too. I cite anything that I don't understand until I understand. Are you getting me? Now, you got to understand here, women, that the children are not yours. So this whole thing that women are fighting to, to take off their children, to have an inheritance for their children, the children are not yours. The Bible says, blessed is the woman whose quiver is who. Is that what the Bible says? Blessed is who? The man. Not the woman whose quiver is who. Of them, the man. And the Bible says that children, like an arrow in the hands of a mighty man, so are children in the hands of a man. Not a woman. And you've got to understand that the children are not named after the woman. Because anything that is yours, your name ought to be on it. So if you say the children are yours, why is it that your name are not on the children? Hello? You see, women are taking to themselves things that God has not given them to handle. You are handling too much. There are certain things you are handling, you are not called to handle it. Yours is to help. So the children are mine, but she is helping me to bring them out. She's helping. She's a helper. But I make the rules in the house. I make the laws. I have a rule in my house that my children go to bed at a particular time. And if they don't do certain things, they can't have certain things at the weekend. And she ought to enforce that law. But I make the law. She doesn't make it. Are you hearing me? Because that is my place as a priest and a king and a father. Now, as a husband, I have to deal with her, her needs, her emotions, and her protection. I play that role as a husband. But as a man, I have a mandate from God to execute. And I need her to undertake me as a man to fulfill God's mandate for my life. Now, the woman's purpose in the mind of God, that which was written in the archives of eternity before the females came to planet Earth, is that you are going to have God's man and surround him with aid and assistance and complete that man that he will function spirit, soul, and body effectively to fulfill God's pleasure, God's will on that man's life. Are you hearing me? Now the women say, so where do we stand? When you do that, you fulfill God's will and plan and agenda for your life. So this thing about women fighting for their own inheritance, uh, I tell my wife that baby, forget it. Don't fight for anything of your own. Don't do it. Because when you do it, you undermine God's purpose. When you do it, you are depriving me. Then you shouldn't have married me. Why should you marry me if you are coming to build your own empire? Why should you marry me if you are going to be married to me and deprive and deny me of the purpose for which you came into my life? You came to help me. You see, and this is where I need to go to the full gospel business man to make them to understand that the Bible said that for this cause, for the cause, for the reason of the woman to fulfill a role, the man must leave. That word leave means to cut off. He got to cut himself off from his mother and from his father. You got to cut off. Now, if you don't cut off, you can't keep. And the word keep means to, to, to continuously, to, to, to keep on chasing her. Don't stop chasing her. Are you getting me? And if your husband is not going to stop chasing you, then you don't have to let yourself go when you are hurt and offended. You got to take care of yourself. You got to do all the things that you do that makes you desirable and that makes, that makes your husband want to come after you. But when you let yourself go, then you don't blame him. 
Now, a lot of Christian women let themselves go. Now, some of you, you will bear me out that before you get born again, now you used to do things. You spend time to take care of your body and of yourself. And you do things for that man because you didn't want any woman to share your man with you. But since you got born again and he got born again, and you now know he fears God, so he can't go out and fool around and mess up and look at another woman because if he does that, God will be angry with him. And you know the Bible and you know that he fears God. You are taking him for granted and you're not taking care of yourself. You've let yourself go. You act anyhow. You do anything. And you don't do those things you used to do in bed anymore. You have stopped doing those things. You become very holy and righteous. Shout so, yeah. Now, 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 women, you got to understand what destroys Samson. Samson was called to begin the deliverance of the children of Israel. And he came on the scene, and Samson was destroyed by Delilah. Now, you got to understand that Delilah did not destroy Samson by putting some medicine in food. No. A lot of women think that that woman is going after my man because he has given him something to eat. No, no, no. It's not all the time. Those things work, but it's not all the time. It is after he has gotten him, then he does those things to keep him. You, you got a revelation here. And some people say that she's using whiskers, she's using spell. No. They know what they use. The woman, every one of you women sitting here, you got something. You got something that makes a man fall. And you got to understand that Delilah had understanding of what she had. And when the father and the mother of Samson said unto him, Are there no women among our own people? What is driving you crazy? What is taking you out from among our own women? Listen to what Samson said. Samson said, She pleases me well. Are you getting the revelation? Now, you got to understand that the women in Israel had the same ability that Delilah had and could have done the same thing. Why is it that the heart of Solomon went out for strange women? The daughters of the pharaohs. Why? Because those women, they knew how to take care of their body, of, their, of themselves. How to entice their husbands and seduce their men. Now you as Christian women, every woman married here, under the sound of my voice, you got to entice your man. You got to seduce that man. In the bedroom, you got to act like a prostitute in your bedroom to your own husband. Hello? Because you got to understand that was what destroyed something. And if you Christian women don't wake up and do the things you must do, and turn that man on and kick that man, the Delilahs out there will use what you have. That is the sad thing. They will use what you have and they will do what you can do that you are not doing it. Not just to get hold of the man, but to destroy him. And you got to understand that that is the father of your children. And that is your man and your husband. And you got to understand that God has given you what it takes. The woman of the well, the woman of the, uh, the Samaritan woman, you got to understand that she was married to five men. And, and, and she lost them all. Now, the problem of this woman was not that she wasn't pretty. She knew how to seduce, to entice, and to seize, to capture, to arrest the men. And not just one man. And she didn't, she didn't just have the men, but she got the men to what? Marry her. And they became husbands. But the problem she had was she didn't know how to keep and how to maintain the man. And the problem of a lot of Christian women today is you don't know how to keep your man. You take advantage of them. And you let yourself go in the name of prayer. Prayer doesn't work everything out. There are certain things you got to do it physically. Shout you see, that's why, that's why Paul said, let the elderly women teach the young women how to love. That word there means how to show affection to their husbands. And, and ladies and gentlemen, you got to understand here that the word worship, 
came out of the old English word intercourse. It was a king that used those words. And the Bible said, if you are the daughters of Sarah, then you ought to be able to call your husband was Lord, like Sarah called Abraham, my Lord. Now, if you're a woman and you can't call your husband my Lord, you have a problem. And yours is serious. Are you hearing me? Now, I am not talking to unbelieving women here. I'm talking to God's women. I am talking to the redeemed of the Lord. I'm talking to God's heritage. And I'm talking about divine order here. I don't care what the world says. I am drawing your attention to God's word. And women, let me tell you something. Listen, you don't need to do anything outside what the word of God tells you to do. And that man will love you all the days of his life. Have you, listen, I have some friends. Their wives died and they never married the rest of their lives. And some of them, I've talked to them and they said, I can't get it out of my mind. You think it was just an ordinary woman like, oh, oh, you think that she was just a woman? Because if she was just a woman, then he would have gone out for another woman. But there was something that woman did. She had such an impression on him that she just can't see himself going for another woman. That to him means to betray the memory of that woman. Are you getting me? Now, if it like for instance, if a man is satisfied, or if you eat and you are satisfied and you go to town, anytime I'm invited to a dinner, this is a secret, my wife will forgive me for that. Anytime I'm invited to a dinner or to a party, I eat at home first. I enjoy my wife's food. To tell you, I enjoy my wife's food than anybody else's food. My mother, my mother used to come stay with us some time ago, some years ago. And when she came around, she wanted to tell the girl in the kitchen and to try to tell my wife things to do. And I said, Mom, no more. You don't come live with us anymore. She eats my wife and she prepares my meal. Not her mother, not my mother, not my sister. My wife. Are you getting me? Now, you can be a whatever and be offended, but this is principle. And principle is principle. So I eat at home before I go. So when I go, you see me hanging around, drinking a little water, drinking this, taking that little thing. I'm satisfied already. Are you hearing me? And when a woman fulfills all the sexual drives and desires and cravings and appetite of the man, it doesn't matter who you are. You can be, you can be the, the descendant of Delilah or Jezebel. And you meet that man outside, he will run and come and tell the wife, look at that woman. Can you imagine what she's thinking? She's making a pass on me. Look at her. She'll come and tell him. But when a man leaves what he has, if you want the petrol, and you go to Texaco, and you don't have it, and you go to Mobile, and there is petrol, and you fill your tank, it serves the same purpose. Is it not the same petrol? So why should a man leave what he has and go outside and follow something else? The same thing. He has the same thing in the house, but then he goes out to follow the same thing. The one in the house is not doing something right. Uh, Listen, I have this unbeliever friend of mine, and this unbeliever girl who lives opposite where I used to live. This unbeliever guy, some of you have heard his name, I won't mention his name. He was all over in town chasing girls, and he had such a pretty wife. Pretty lady, you see the lady and you know that this one. <laughs> Hallelujah. And he leaves her and go chasing some women. And I didn't understand him. Then he got involved with this lady, friend of mine, opposite where I used to live. And suddenly we did not hear of him again. We don't hear of him. We didn't see him in time. We all thought he had trouble. But yet he was in town. And you called his house and he said, oh, uh, can you call me some other time or I'll call you. And he was always at home. So someone told me. So I went to this lady friend of mine. I said, listen, see now, I want to talk to you. What is it about you? The man sent the wife out. And the wife was very slim. She was very together. Now, it doesn't matter how slim or fat you are. You've got to fulfill the purpose. For which you were brought into that man's life. 
Now, if you are slim or fat, it doesn't make any difference. You got to understand that it's not being slim or fat that is the pain, but it's fulfilling that man, completing the man. And if the man is not complete, you will go find him for that thing that will make him complete. Because that is the purpose for which you came. There is something lacking and you came to complete, to fulfill that thing that is lacking. So I asked him, I said, tell me. He sent the wife away and sent the children away. And got married to this lady. And this lady was married. And the husband came to the house of this friend. And he ordered the watchman to kill the husband. And the watchman took a cutlass and began to cut the man. And the man took the cutlass and cut the watchman and he died. Are you hearing me? <laughs> when we heard it, some of us said it is demonic. She has something she's using. So I want to sit down with talk. And she said something. She said to me, Pastor Nick, I know you're a man of God. And I don't know what the Bible says about this. But she said something. She said, I saw my mother when I was growing up. The way she treated my father and handled my father. And, and she said to me, no man can ever leave me. I said, why? He said, because I know what men like. And I'll give it to them. And I said, what do they like? He said, men like worship. I said, wow. I said, how do you do it? He said, he said, I sometimes bath for my husband. I take him into the bathroom. I fix the water. I bath for him. I massage him. I remove his fingernails. I sit down. I do things for him that nobody will do for him. I said, wow. Are you hearing me? She left him. And up to now, he doesn't want to get involved with any other woman. He left an impression on him. And he tried other women. He didn't find it. So he's still manipulating, finding ways of things to get back to her. And I know men who take their wife to this lady for her to teach those wives. You say it's witchcraft. No, it's not witchcraft. It's not everything that is to do a medicine. Are you hearing me? Now, you women, I'm telling you today, if you will live with this understanding that the purpose for which you came into the life of that man is to help make the man, you got to understand something that if you want to be a queen, all you got to do is to make your man a king. And you become an automatic queen. You get that? And you got to also understand that woman, it doesn't matter how successful and how rich and wealthy and educated you are. If your husband is a messenger, you are the wife of the messenger. If your husband is a driver and you are a business executive, forget it. You are the madame of the driver's wife. And if your husband is a director or a business executive, you are the madame of the director. As soon as you come, they say, madame has come. So that your purpose is not to become powerful and then for you to project yourself and for you to make it and to have money, but is to, is to assist that man and make that man everything that he was born to be. Use your dream, use your abilities, use your skill, use what God has given you. Project that man, make that man a something and a king. Make that man the pride of his God and God will honor you. But when you don't help that man, you are, you are allowing the devil to use you to undermine the purposes of God for your own life and for the life of that man. So you are fighting God and you are fighting the purposes of God and you are serving the devil's purpose. Now I know that in our society, a lot of women will kill themselves to make money and when they are helping the men, the men make wheels. And leave their properties like my father to their sisters, kids, what our season, etc. and etc. But but this is where you women got to use what God has given you to turn that man around for God. And I'm telling you, women, apart from prayer, you can turn the man around for God. I know what I'm telling you. It does work. There are women in my church who men were not coming to my church. And they didn't like to hear the name of my church. They were so when they had the name of my church or my name, they were so mad. They haven't even seen me before. And they didn't want to hear my name or my church. 
Then I saw those women there and I said, listen, there is something you are doing wrong. You got to be a worshiper. Say a worshiper. Now you got to understand what worship means. The word worship comes from the Greek word poskonios. And poskonios means to lie flat or straight and prostrate. Poskonios means to come down and bow your knee and kiss. And a lot of women got to come down. Listen, if you are going to be a worshiper, you got to come down. Forget about your beauty and everything is for the man. It's not for you. Come with me. To, come with me. Let me prove this to you. Come with me to First Corinthians chapter 11. Honey, how am I doing? First Corinthians chapter 11. Of his job or things are not going well for him. And you don't talk to him right. And you just talk to him anyhow and tell him your food is on the table. And ask for you what is wrong with you. Look at all your friends and their wives. And look at me. Look at me. Look at what you have made of me. Look at me. Look at my children. You don't know what you are doing to that man. Because what a man can stand is when he can take care of his wife. I'm telling you. And when he can, I'm, talk, I'm not talking about unbelieving men here. I'm talking about what? Godly men and women. I assume that all of you and your men are born again. I know not all, but I want you to see it that way. Hallelujah. Are you hearing me? Amen. Amen. And when that man comes home and everything is going wrong and bad and the whole world is on him. And he also begins to say unfavorable words. And you put up a cold and a wrong attitude. You don't know what you are doing to that man. You have finished him. You are killing him. You turn him against you. And he sees you as an enemy. He sees you like any one of those out there fighting him. But when he comes home and you treat him well. And you do him good. Even when he abuses you, the Bible says, Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. And the word mercy means exemption from judgment. And when that man comes home and after all that he did to you, last night, you show him mercy. It will melt that hardness and rebellion and stubbornness and wickedness in him. And he sees you as one person that is so good and kind for him to touch you and hurt you again. But when he does something wrong and you also put up a front and a resistance and you also want to show something, you got to remember you were skillfully and carefully warned. So you are not a man. He was warned. Squeezed. You get the revelation here. Come with me. I want you women to read this for yourself. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 7 to 9. Please read. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, from verse 7 to 9. Please read aloud, everybody. No, 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 it's okay. Am I the one saying it? Who said it? It is written. Say it is written. You got to understand that the woman was made for the pleasure of who? The man. So the purpose of the woman in the life of the man is to give him what? Pleasure. Not trouble. Not fights. But what? Pleasure. And you got to understand, women, when you give that man pleasure, he will go out of his way to do anything. Listen to what Samson did. Samson, after all that Delilah did, because he said, he what? Pleases me well. He went out of his way, put his head on her lap and said, woman, I know you want to kill me, but go ahead, just kill me. Finish me. Just do whatever you want to do. Just finish me. After all, you are finished me already, so just finish me. <laughs> are you hearing me? That is how powerful you women are. I'm telling you. I tell my young pastors, don't underestimate any sister. I said, treat them as sisters, but don't underestimate them because they are powerful. 
And listen, you women, you got to understand that you are powerful. Do you know that when it came to the destiny of Moses to be decided, it was between God and Moses' mother. The father had nothing to do with it. Do you know that the destiny of one of the greatest prophets that live in the, on, upon the face of planet earth, Samuel, the destiny of that man to become a Nazarite, a man under a vow, whose razor shall not touch his head all the days of his life and became a prophet, one of the greatest prophets that ever lived. Did you know that Elkanah, the husband of Hannah, had nothing to do with it? God, it was, it was Hannah that bargained it out between Hannah and God settled the whole thing. And the husband had nothing to do with it. You see how powerful women are? You women are powerful. You don't have to fight. Are you hearing me? You have your own way of fighting. Use it. Don't use the man's way. It doesn't work. Because you are not made that way. When you use your mouth, when you try to be tough, when you try to say, I won't let them take me for granted. You have been taken for granted already. <laughs> are you hearing me? And listen, let me tell you something. Hey, take it from me. Take it from me. I know some of you have negative minds, but take it from me. My mother, my father married a lot of women. My father has 36 children. <laughs> I won't tell you. <laughs> you know? So, he married a lot of women. And there was this one particular woman that won my father's hand. And I have watched that woman over the years. And I now understand why my father up to now has not forgotten her. My father has forgotten all his wives, including my mother. <laughs> but that one, that one woman, she's still fresh in his heart. Are you hearing me? And that woman left my father. Married. Got married again recently. Listen carefully. Got married again recently. And she got married and a tragedy hit her. The man she married was married before. Now the man had kids. When the man died, he will everything. Now they, they were married for some few months. He willed everything and made sure that she was given and treated well in the wheel. Now, the children didn't like the idea, but the man did it. And I said, I said, I said what, what is it? But you know a secret? I saw the way he handled the man. As a man, I saw it. And I said, oh, this is the key. When you as a woman knows how to treat your man, you see, don't, don't try to be a, a man, be a woman, and know that you are a woman and accept yourself as a woman and thank God that you are a woman. And don't, don't feel that when the Bible says submit, God is unfair. No, accept what God has made you and function as that. And worship that man. Listen, no man will take a, a woman that worships you for granted. I don't take my wife for granted. Because I like the things she does to me. Are you hearing me? And I don't want her to stop doing those good things. Because it helps the anointings to flow. It makes me function better. When I travel, I have my wife's Bible in my picture, her picture in my Bible, her picture in my passport. And when I miss her, I look at the picture. And I kiss that picture. I say, wow, baby, I miss you. But when I come home, I put that picture aside and I hold her eyeball to eyeball and shoulder to shoulder. And I want some response. I don't want some coldness. It kills me. I want some response. I want to hear her saying, I miss you, honey. And I want her to tell me something. And I want to feel strength coming through my bones. So, yeah. Now, don't look at me that way because you like it. Hallelujah. Yeah. Are you hearing me? The Bible says, when the way of a man pleases the Lord, he maketh what his enemies to be at peace with him. Listen, when you please your husband, he will kill for you. Are you hearing me? 
I had this lady in my chair. Had problems with the mother-in-law. The mother-in-law would come and go to the husband in the bathroom while she's, she's bathing. And, 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 and had no respect for her. And he had no respect for her. And she was talking. And I said, you know what your problem is? You are the problem. She said, why are you saying that? I said, you are not a worshiper. I sat there and I said, what and what do you do for your husband? Tell me what and what you do for him. Apart from cooking for him. I said, you spend time. Look at the time you close. You go back home. And the time he comes home. And it's the, it's the young lady in the house that cooks for the man. And sets the tables and everything. What do you do for him? And I said, you got to understand why you are made, were made as a woman and why you are in his life. And if you don't fulfill that pain, the mother will continue to manipulate him. Because something is wrong. And the mother is a woman and she knows it. So she's taking advantage of it. She said, what do I do? I said, find a better job. Find a job that will let you close early. Find a way. Do something. Your priority is him. It's not the job and the money. And if it comes to that, tell him, listen, I'm going to live on your little salary, but I want to be home to serve you and be there for you when you come from work. That man is going to work over time. I am talking what works. Maybe your situation is not like that, but the word of God is what I'm talking. Are you getting me? The world has its own. There are different kinds of men, but I'm telling you what the Bible says. And the word of God works. Amen. So I said, begin to do things for him. And, and don't leave his food for the maid. I don't want anybody handling my food. There's certain food I don't eat in anybody's house except my wife handles it. Like fufu. My wife has got to handle it. No other hand. Are you understanding me? And so it doesn't matter who does it. I will eat it. So I don't want any maid. It doesn't matter how good you are. Don't touch it. Let my wife do it. And she knows if you put it at the table, I won't eat it. Be there for him when he comes. Set his table. Take care of the man. Minister to his need. Make sure all his things are in place. Some men don't know where their shoes and their, uh, what do you call it, slippers and their uh, socks and things are. Arrange the man. You came. Rearrange his life. Teach him how to do it. Don't tell him now. Romantic and a sexy atmosphere in that house. 
Don't just don't just give him food to eat. If it is food, he can he can go and get the cook to cook. And he can go and eat in a restaurant. But there is something you have. He can't just go there and get it. Give it to him. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. It's important. Women, listen. I'm telling you something. I'm married. I have a wife. Are you hearing me? I have a wife and I don't look at other women. Are you hearing me? Whenever, whenever I'm looking at a, a woman with some emotive, my wife knows. And the times we used to have problems, she knew that if she didn't find a way to help me, I would get into trouble. Because, because some other women could see that, that, that there was something wrong. I wasn't happy. I wasn't myself. And I could stay at the office. She would tell you, those days I stayed at the office. I'll go to office at 6 in the morning. From prayer meeting, I go to the office at 6. And sometimes I get home at 11 when everybody is asleep. I just stay and work and work and work and work. And I did all my meetings. Sometimes I give some of my friends to come to my office. 10 o'clock, we'll be having tea and coffee and having a good time. I'll go. I go home and they are asleep. Access. Now, sometimes it's very difficult to get me in the office even once a week. Are you hearing me? It's so difficult. Yesterday, I, I had to fight. And this morning, I had to fight to go to the office. I didn't want to go. Because we're having a good time. Yeah. Are you hearing me? And, and, and women, don't let your husband bring you presents and, and, and gifts only at your birthday or anniversary day. Let that man make him crazy. Let him bring gifts and, and flowers every day or every week at least. Minimum every week. Let him come up with a surprise. Turn to somebody and say, it doesn't matter what you feel. And what you think about what you are hearing. And what has happened to you? What you are hearing is the truth. It works. It can work for you. If you are willing and obedient to give it a try, it will work for you. Hallelujah. I'm going to have to stop here. Hallelujah. Tomorrow we are going to talk about the purpose of the wife. And Saturday we'll be talking about the purpose of the mother. Now you got to understand that you have the ability to function as a woman. And you have also what it takes to be a wife. And you have also what it takes to be a mother. And, and the man, the man, have what it takes to be a man, and what it takes to be a husband, and what it takes to be a father. Now, women, don't go and tell your men what they should be and do as men. And, are you hearing me? You just go and do yours. He will begin to say, where have you been? What is happening to you? Are you getting the revelation here? It's very important. And women, work on yourself. Work on yourself. Don't let yourself go. Sometimes I know you go through frustration when you take seed. Especially, I watch my wife. That's why I don't, have, I, don't, I don't want any more kids. You know, I like her this way. You know, she, they take seed and they change. And, and the things they go through. And then after, after delivery, you know, I was at the labor ward. This, this, this one, the third one, I was at the labor ward. And when the contraction began, I stood there. I said, this thing is, is more than madness. Hey, I didn't know that this is, this is the way it is. I believe every man must go to labor ward. I'm telling you. I stood there. My knees were shaking. I said, Lord, I'm too young. Don't add the rest to it. <laughs> Hallelujah. And she said, don't stand there and look at me that way. Fan me. So I began to fan her. And she said, are you hearing me? And then, and then she said, stop fanning me. Stop fanning me. 
Then, then I said, what should I do then? She said, don't stand and tell me what should I do. If you don't know what to do, then get out of here. The woman didn't know who I was anymore. She forgot me. I said, this is serious. And when it came to the time that the baby was coming and she had to push, my, I stood there and I said, these women, they are stronger than men. Are you hearing me? The energy that I held the neck, it was hard like stone. The kind of force and power and at that particular power, at that particular moment, as a spiritual man, standing there at theater, I saw something. It was like she died and she revived. And I said, wow, this thing is something else. So when I saw it, I said, these women, they are stronger than men. If any man tries to go through what they go through, you won't exist for a day. Are you hearing me? So women, your own is not in fighting. That is not where yours. It's not in your mouth. Are you hearing me? You are stronger because you have more. You see, endurance is a sign of maturity. So you are mature. You can take more pain than men can handle. We, we easily react. It is true that women are 90% inclined to emotions and 10% inclined to reasoning. And men are 90% inclined to reasoning and 10% inclined to emotions. But because of the childbearing, women are endowed with some special skills and abilities that men don't have. Listen, the kind of things women go through when they take seed for that, for that nine months. And they are able to endure. Man, if I feel like throwing up even for a day, I can't handle myself. And the things they go through. Are you hearing me? And so be a woman. You know, I used to tell my wife years ago, I said, I said, listen, honey, just be a woman. Just be there for me to love you. Don't, don't be hard. Don't fight me. Because when you do that, I can't love you. I, I can't love a man. I want to love a woman. I want to love somebody I have compassion for. Somebody I feel like, man, I don't have to do this to her. She's so good to me. She's so kind. But when you want, when you go and put on trousers, and jeans, and you put belt, and you bring Sayo to the house. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Remember women, the purpose for which you were made. It doesn't matter how society has turned it, and how men have abused you. The purpose for which God made you is to help that man. Say help. help. Say my main purpose. And the reason for which I live as a woman is to help my man. That is the main purpose. And how I pray that God will arise to your cause and will not allow any man to abuse you and to take you for granted. May God give you a revelation. And may you also know that as a woman, when you go on your knees and you pray, things happen. And that you can turn the tides and soften the hardened heart of a man and turn him around. On your knees, adding worship, doing what you must do. You see, when the Bible says that the man is the head of the woman, the same Bible says Christ is the head of the man. So when the man is doing what he should do, appeal to his head and say to his head, do to him what I cannot do to him. Handle him for me. And listen, women, if you play your role, if you do what you must do and endure the pain and appeal to the father, God, because you, the Bible said that when you have fulfilled your obedience, then you will be ready to avenge your disobedience. The Bible says, submit yourself to God. Resist the devil and he will flee. That means your ability to resist the devil lies in your obedience to what? Submit to who? God. And the Bible says, submit unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. It works. I am a man. And I know that with all our machos and all that we do, there is a weak point in us for you women, and you can handle it. 
Are you hearing me? You believe the man is wicked. You believe he won't change. You believe he's thief. You believe because you see you have made up your mind that it won't work. And it doesn't matter what you do. He's not pleased. You have believed that. But I am a man and I know what I'm telling you. That it doesn't matter how terrible your man is. That if God made it that way, there is something God put in here for the woman. And if you act as a woman and do what you must do, you will break him. And especially as a Holy Ghost filled woman with Holy Ghost and anointing, you will easily break the yoke. Your hand just around his neck, praying tongues when he's asleep, calling the Holy Ghost to come. Stand on your feet.